The Sam Livecast is brought to you by Fixers Living. Check them out on the internet at fixersliving.com or love them on the Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash Fixers Living. Kitchen, bath, outdoor, joy. That's what they do. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Wednesday. Welcome to the Sam Livecast. I'm glad you're here hanging out with us. Max and Lynn are in the back. What's up, everybody? They're all set back there. It's a healthy appetizer week. We hope you hang with us. We're going to talk about the first thing we made uh, on Monday in a minute. Um, Thanks for telling your friends about the Sam Livecast, spreading the word. We greatly appreciate that. It helps us grow. It helps us uh, do bigger and better things. We have some cool stuff coming up. I don't mean today, but I mean in the near future that we're going to be talking about as we get a little further down the road. And it's because you guys are watching, you're uh, subscribing to iTunes, and you're telling your friends. It's as simple as that. Amen. Oh, yeah. The more, the more people that watch, the more stuff that we can do. Mm-hmm. A bigger audience brings more cool junk. So anyway, uh, let's see. A bunch of things to get to first before I cook. <clears throat> first of all, nice cardigan. That, that oh yeah, it looks fly. Now wait a second. The cardigans have not gone away. No, no, they're no. They're coming back, right? They're coming back. Because I, I, I bought this in New York uh two years ago. Uh-huh. Uh before uh today show. But I went back for a today show segment, saw this in uh, uh Macy's or something. It's a giant store that prayed. It's Macy's. Saw it at Macy's, bought it. And uh, promptly gained a bunch of weight and couldn't wear it. Now, <laughs> oh man! Now I got it. It's one tight fitting uh, cardigan you got there. Well, speaking was, of yeah. speaking of weight, yes. What are you at? Because you've been on a severe well, diet. Well, I was away. I was know. away, and I um, deviated a little bit. Oh. But I think I'm. I think I'm. Oh, I'm still ahead. I think I'm down 14 pounds. Wow. 14. Yeah. Wow. Get out of here, dude. So it's uh, it's been three weeks. 14. Damn. Yeah. Five pounds yeah, a week, that's yeah. Basically just five pounds awesome. a week. Wow. I'd like to get to 20. I think 20 would be my number. Okay, 14 in like a span of three weeks is absolutely bananas, dude. Yes. That's, been your, that's been your claim the whole time. It's bananas. And it's... yet I'm fine. I don't think there's anything wrong. <laughs> no, I, I mean, you're fine, but that's that's a lot of weight What's in really inter- What's really interesting is that he can put it all back on just as fast. <laughs> oh, that's the thing. That's I what hope what, I hope what I'm learning. Guy. I hope what I'm learning is that moderation is not a bad thing. Yes. No. And and the meals that don't, how can I put this? Here's what here's what I think my goal will be. Solo meals, non celebratory meals. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think my goal will be to have them be not minimalist, but super healthy. You do work when you're by yourself, so right. that when you're out celebrating, that's exactly you don't right. Have, you that's can... exactly right. I do the work when I by myself, mm-hmm. and 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 of course, look. You know, look, tuna week, and let me just say, uh, Ryan Robertson writes, I just made everything on tuna week, and I loved it. Those mm. tuna cakes with salsa are the best recipes. Good job. Oh, so nice. here's the point. The point that we were trying to make with tuna week is that it's a super healthy, great food for you. Low fat, low cholesterol, low carb, low everything. Uh, and yet, you can eat a bunch of it. And it can still be good. At least the way we made it was good. So when you're trying to eat, what did you say, Max? When you're trying to do the work on the food. Do the work by yourself. It doesn't yeah. have to be bread and, well, not even bread and water anymore, I guess, because you can't have the bread. It doesn't <laughs> have to be water. It doesn't have to be, what is that, uh, what is that diet? It's, it's maple syrup. Lemon juice and water and oh, cayenne. It's that, like that a thing? serious cleanse. It yeah. doesn't have you to be that. Have that. You can have good things that f- things that are good for you. Delicious uh, granola and uh, and Greek yogurt, which we're using again today. In fact, not only could is this uh, healthy appetizer week, it could also be Greek yogurt week mm. because we're we're using it each day. Oh wow! We used it in the in the. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm getting I'm getting ahead of myself. We didn't use it for the uh, hummus. But we did use it last week a couple of times, and we're going to use it again uh, today, and we're going to use it again Friday. Anyway, that's the point. I don't know, but enough about me. Wait, one more thing about me. I did have this thing on my face, this little um, 
Mm -hmm. little bump on my face removed. The doctors were concerned that it was basal cell carcinoma. And I hadn't gotten the diagnosis back. I now have it. It was, in fact, basal cell carcinoma. But when the plastic surgeon took it off, uh, he got all of it. And they know that because... How can I describe this? If here's, if here's what they take off, mm -hmm. thank God it wasn't this big, <laughs> uh, as they look at the edges of what they've sent in for the biopsy and underneath the piece that they sent in for the biopsy with the bottom of it, there, were, there was no cancerous uh, basal cell stuff there. Oh, so they like, took what was there was basal cell carcinoma, but they got it, they took it, and it's all gone. I'm, I'm good. Oh, nice. wow. Thank you. Somebody, I, I forgot to talk about this, and somebody reminded me in an email. So. Oh, yeah. And there do you go. remember my reaction when you told me? <laughs> yes, go ahead. He goes, so I, we got the test back, and it, and it was uh, basal cell carcinoma. And I went, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't even know you were listening to what I was no, saying at I that thought, moment. I thought that for some reason that that diagnosis was what we were wanting. It's like um, when they take something and they say, oh, it's benign. benign. I, thought, I thought that they were saying it was benign. <laughs> but no, but benign to me sounds bad. <laughs> I know it does. It but does. when you and said it, not. I was like, yes. And then you were like, what? That's actually happened to me once. Someone was like, yeah, I got you know, a biopsy. I'm like, oh. what?" And they were like, but it was benign. I'm like, <laughs> benign. I was I'm like, sorry. I was like, should I be like happy or sad? They're like, yeah. Oh my gosh, you're an idiot. <laughs> you don't know what to say, right? Yeah. Hey, we were coming back from Vancouver. I'll talk about Vancouver in a minute, but we we're coming back from Vancouver, and I'm standing in line waiting to check in, and I'm talking to a super nice lady, wheelchair. She's in her own wheelchair, and she's pushing her, like the like the luggage cart, right? All stacked up. We're having this big conversation. She goes through ahead of us, and in Vancouver, once you check in, you now go down another hallway, and you have to give off your bags. They don't put them on the thing behind you, and whatever it is, it's making sure that people are matched their bags, whatever. So as I'm standing there, Kelly was uh, hanging out with me. We're checking in. The lady goes through, and about 12, 15 feet away, she sees that one of the bags falls off this luggage cart the lady's pushing. She's in a wheelchair, so Kelly goes over and said, can I give you a hand? And she goes, no, I'm fine. So Kelly comes back, and she goes, you know, I wasn't going to do anything because I felt like I didn't want to be pandering to her, her handicap. Mm -hmm. But then I thought maybe it is a hassle. So she went up to do it. You know, if you don't do anything, you feel like a bastard. If you do something and people don't want the help, you feel like, a, you feel like mm -hmm. you're going, ah. like this thing on my face, the entire family was like, I know it's going to be okay. You'll be fine. Over. I'm thinking good thoughts for you. I was like, that made me feel worse. I, sometimes you don't know what to do. It's difficult. Sometimes you don't know what the right thing to do or say is. Like Lynn. You know, he was misguided in thinking the benign was a bad thing. But still, I mean, what do you say at that moment? I'm sorry. I mean, I, uh, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, anyway. So, yes, awkward human interactions. Awkward human <laughs> interactions, exactly. We all go through them every day. Uh, okay, so um, Monday we made uh, what I call cheater hummus. And hummus, one of the ingredients is something called tahini, that's sesame paste. It's a little bit of a hassle to find. And then you have to keep it. And you only really, I don't know, what, I wouldn't use it for many other things. So I would buy a little tin of it. I would use a tablespoon or two. Then I'd end up throwing this shit, shit up. So my cheater, uh, the fix for the hummus is not using tahini, but something that I always have in my cupboard, which is sesame oil. Mm. And in this case, I use chili sesame oil which it makes the, the hummus a little bit more spicy, mm -hmm. or a little bit spicy, I should say, because it's inherently not spicy, and gives it a slightly yellow tinge to the color, right? There it is right there. There it is right there. Okay, so you, you can... Um, That's an iPhone photo. You can take my, pic you take my picture, my okay. computer for a sec, yes. right? So there it is. There's the picture. Okay. Here's the picture Lynn took of it mm -hmm. that was going to go up, and it's a freaking beautiful picture. But every time I looked at the picture, something was bugging me. What was bugging you? Well, it looks like the hummus coming over the top is a tongue. Really? That's oh, what bothered you? I just you? noticed that. It looks like, That's funny. It looks like um, <laughs> something gross to me. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I guess now that and you I, noticed. I called Lynn and I said, hey, dude, do you have another picture? And he hadn't taken any pictures. So I said, well, I'm going to take a picture. And I took this one. Mm -hmm. And somebody wrote on Facebook, do you have it? 
Somebody said it looked like the, the... I love hummus, but they really should have done a better job on the photo. It looks like one piece of broccoli got drunk, passed out, and threw up. <laughs> it's actually what it looks like. It really does. That's Maybe so it's just funny. Me. But this click on right my here. comment. The straggler. The straggler. So I, re I replied to that. I go, oh, so blame me. I took the picture. Yes, we had another one, but I didn't like it. It's tough making it look appetizing. Mm -hmm. And then the, the sesame chili oil gives it that color. There's no good way. It's, I don't know. And I look at, I love, I love Lynn's picture. Yeah, it's, it's artistic. Good. It's great. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. But I kept seeing a fucking tongue there. <laughs> Slowly starting to lick over. And I was worried any second now, this big horrifying face was going to come up on the other side of that sign. <laughs> so Doesn't it look like it? Because right there looks like that crease that's down the center, sort of down the center of a tongue. Yeah. Kind uh, of, yeah. And here's the thing. Maybe it would be better if I didn't put parsley in my... Uh, hummus but Those i do because things. i like the color of it yeah screw it i mean i went home and immediately made it actually and i didn't put parsley in because i didn't have any mm -hmm. it's, it's delicious either way i mean it's just really it's delicious stuff. either way well so you guys all know that you can go to the samlivecast.com and see all of our awesome food photography but what you guys don't really know is that sometimes things we make things that aren't necessarily conducive to a beautiful pho photograph Wow. So we have to get creative. And I think Lynn would like take exception to mushy that. Mushy things. No, what? what do you it mean? is I'm, a beautiful photograph. No, I'm not. I'm not saying for me. It didn't work for me. I didn't say anything about the photo. I said that there, we make things that are difficult to shoot, like right. a mushy yellow hummus. You hear Lynn sometimes get the camera out in the uh, as as the cameras are rolling. Well, you can't hear him, but we can. Mm -hmm. You'll see him standing, getting ready to picture, and he's like, "Dude, this is going to be hard to shoot." Mm -hmm. He usually figures it out. Yeah, he does, and he does well. Uh, by the way, that that yeah. So anyway, all right. So I go to Vancouver <laughs> this weekend. It was my father's unveiling, the unveiling of my father's headstone that uh, was not too emotional. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. But my, uh, but the plane, my observation about the plane is two things. Traveling is very difficult. <laughs> I think it's difficult. Oh, yes. It's difficult when you go to another country that speaks all the same language and the words are the same. But in Vancouver, when you, you go into the airport, you have to take this customs form to fill out that you ultimately have to hand to the U.S. customs guys down at the end of a bunch of whatever before you even get to your plane. And if you don't fill it out at, at the count, if you don't have it filled out with the counter when you're checking in, they make you go back and you don't really know you have to do this. And there's so many little stops you have to make. I just uh, like the amazing race now has a lot more respect in my opinion, because where they have to pull this shit off in foreign countries with words that people don't understand and you mm -hmm. can't read the signs and stuff. And then they do that thing where they start letting people on the plane before it used to be, if you're in first class, get on everybody else, which makes no sense. By the way. Well, if you paid more money. Well, you're right. It makes no sense because imagine why would you want to be the first on the plane when you're at the front? Imagine you're you're traveling on a Greyhound bus and it's a half an hour before you're go before you're about to leave. And they say all the people who bought the most expensive tickets go sit and wait on the hot bus and just sit there. Right. In the claustrophobic <laughs> tube that uh, you I'm have to sit you. on for hours after that. All well, the people I who guess, paid the most go on first. You don't, they I, should be last. I guess nowadays, part of the reasoning is you get on first, then you've got room for all your stuff. Yes. And because then, people don't want to check bags anymore because they're expensive. If you try to game the system like me and try the to system. get it on at the last minute, possible minute, so you don't have to sit there. I hate sitting there. I hate there sitting there too, but then the you get screwed. Ready to go. Then you get screwed. You get screwed with your exactly. bag at your feet because there's bag, no room above. Or all the way in the back. Or the, and then you yeah, have to wait. And it's that's terrible. Brutal. And you have to go past your seat to find a hole for your bag. Oh, yeah. But so here's what they do. They let the first class passengers get on and that's fine. Then they let old people get on. They need extra time and that's fine. Then people that have kids get on. That's fine. <laughs> And then people that are in that special admirals club or, or the high flyers club or whatever the hell they call it, mm -hmm. right? That's fine. Then anybody who active military, that's fine. The people that are in the back that are special like military, that's fine. I understand that they should let that happen. But by the time they let all these special, and then row six, and they're doing this, and anybody that's in row six can get on. Mm -hmm. Like row six? <laughs> what the hell is row six? Row six on this flight was the bulkhead which I guess means they don't have any room underneath the seat in front of them to put junk. Mm. So they have to have room above. So they let them get on early. Got it. 
But here's the most important thing. So I get to the airport. I have my seat, right? Yeah. And um, as I'm checking in, I say to them, do you have anything left in the exit row? And the guy checks in the computer. He goes, yes. What would you like? I go, oh, uh, I'd like an aisle exit row. He goes, you can have it. I get on my plane. Here's my two and a half hour flight. Take my computer from uh, Vancouver to Seattle. That's me in the, rec- in the exit row. Yeah. Can you tell... These are two empty seats. No, oh, wow. Oh, two wait. empty seats in the exit row with all that leg room. How is that possible? It's possible because when you go to check, uh, when you book your flight online, mm-hmm. you choose your seat and the exit rows are always taken. They save those for like the day before. Yes. So there's two exit rows, three seats on either side of the aisle. Three, six, nine, 12 seats. Of the 12 seats, one, two, three, four, five, Six of them were empty and they could have been filled simply by people saying when they checked in at the counter, do you have any room left in the exit rows? So ladies and gentlemen, take my advice. Always ask if there's room in the exit row. Mm. I flew the whole flight like that. Hey, nobody are, there. You, you know, you can even get lucky and ask if there's any, hey, is there any uh, room in first class? Can we yeah. get upgraded? I mean, that's Sometimes rare. Sometimes they but... do that, but it's rare. Yeah. yeah. Coming from an exit seat like fiend. Yeah, because I need them. <laughs> Freaking monster! That's amazing. I need. To, I you need do to need it. So you do. You need tricks. to be asking. Okay. So, uh, last thing, I, I think I'm pretty progressive in my views towards most things. Mm-hmm. I really do. Uh, I'm sitting at the airport in Seattle, uh, killing a little bit of time coming back. They've got a bunch of rocking chairs, and they're all facing giant, beautiful windows out in the tarmac and the gorgeous snow-covered mountains way beyond. And I'm sitting there, and I see this. <clears throat> tell me if you can tell what, what, what this is. Let me make it a little bigger. No, 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 no. Don't. Oh. I'll make it bigger. Um, um, any idea? It's I just see chairs. chairs and someone sitting in one. Someone sitting in a chair. Yes. Well, does this help? <laughs> oh, God. Breastfeeding. She's breastfeeding. Oh, my God. That's a boob right in the mouth. Yeah, it's a giant boob right in the mouth. Now, look. Get it off of that. I don't want people to think I'm too creepy. Jeez. And it, I wasn't creeping but i'm sitting there just like this looking out the windows oh my god there's a woman there breastfeeding i was so shocked it was like a five-year-old seeing a seeing a a breast for the first time or something (laughs) i couldn't believe it i was so i don't know why it was so weird to me is this not an ongoing debate in our society about whether or not women should be doing that and i look i believe it's completely natural it's healthy they should be doing it and they should be completely allowed to do it in public if they're okay with it just like that though the problem was I, i was i was the one that was instantly made uncomfortable by the whole thing and I'm not saying they shouldn't do it because I got uncomfortable. I just, I, I was, su- honestly, I was surprised at my own reaction. I was probably blushing if you could have looked at me. Like <laughs> I bet you were. It's a little ballsy. Just Is it ballsy? That. I mean. You don't see it too much. You but just... here's the thing. There's a thing called a hooter hider. I, yeah. Is that what they're Why called? can't she have a hooter hider? Yeah. That it's, up. Like <laughs> a, it's like a blanket, uh, a, like a sheet thing. That I guess goes over the shoulder and then it hides all the action underneath it. Oh, uh-huh. and the if I had seen called... that, I would have known what was going on, and I would have. I'm just telling you, I was. Sh- I'm just admitting how shocked I was at what was going on there. I like that the company the that makes this. Who's the company that makes it? Bebe Ale. Oh, it makes sense if you speak French. <laughs> By the way. What does that mean? Baby on the boob or something? No, oh, ladies milk. milk. Yeah. Oh, okay. Babe, uh, by the way, enough about the breast feeding. And by the way, it was a large breast too. Maybe that's what surprised me. <laughs> it I don't was not really a small know. breast. There was no small and nothing small about that. <laughs> um, uh, we have an announcement to make that we're now legally allowed to say. Lynn, would you like to say it? Yeah, let me let me put it the way that I was instructed to say it because I, I don't want to mm. you know, step on any toes. I think some people out there might have known. I'm sure yeah. they do. Yes, people guessed all over the place. Yeah. But if you don't know, starting on May 22nd, is that the date? Weren't you going to let him say it? I know. Huh? What's wrong? No, no, no. I was just building it up. I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> okay. So the announcement is tune in to watch me cook on MasterChef Season 4 starting on Wednesday, May 22nd on Fox. Yeah, 8 baby. 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. 
Wow, really? That's how you're going to lay that down? I, I don't know. I was on the show. Like, you should come How about this? And you know what? Here's the thing. Lindsay on MasterChef! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah. And here's the thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Calendar that date. Calendar the next day, too, because I could be actually on the week following, too. It's a two-episode premiere. and That's um, a Wednesday and a... And a Wednesday. Oh, yeah. it, oh, I see. They're they're not going to do like the two day premiere thing. I think they are. See, the thing is, from what I read from this press release, this official press release on FoxFlash.com, dot mm-hmm. yeah. there could be a chance where um, some of the contestants or most of them go on the first night on May twenty second, and yeah. then they're going to finish the rest of them on the 29th. and that's when they're going to reveal the finalists uh, who makes it actually into the Master Chef kitchen. So mm. it seemed pretty exciting. Calendar that, and of course, you can't you know, tell us any of that. I can't tell you any details, but man, but it was you a, can tell us. Uh, and you know it's so funny because we discussed you were trying out for Master Chef. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and then he disappeared for two months. Ad nauseum here on the show. Uh-huh. And then you disappeared for a couple of months, and then you're back, and we couldn't say where you were, Mm-mm. which is I don't get. I mean, <sighs> and it was it was it was a little painful to not be able to say anything. See, it's one thing not saying it on the show; it's another thing not telling like your friends. Yeah. Can you your- exp- talk a little bit about, um, Oh, you know what? I think we should tease this for the next show. And on Friday, you guys can hear a little bit about how Lynn went up to, uh, went away from, for two months and was That's good. We disconnected from his, from his fiance and all of us. And well, apparently you've just told us, so we don't need to talk no, about it. He's going to elaborate. So gotcha. we'll, that'll be in the Friday show before we uh, hop in the kitchen. Yes. Uh, I always like to, you know, give some shout outs to our friends on Twitter and Facebook. I want to say hello <laughs> to Alice Troy, the hip foodie mom. That's her hey. tag. Hey, hip foodie she mom. said, canned tuna happening now, inspired by the cooking guy. Check out his show, yo. <laughs> nice. And then the next one, she said, All getting right. my omega-3s. I'll, like, I'll never change a photo again. Jeez. No, no what, what she was, what are you talking about? She was talking about canned tuna. Yeah, not, she was talking you. about canned tuna, not about hummus. Oh, wait, what <laughs> photo? Is the, no, 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 go back. We weren't yeah. looking at a photo. That. We were looking at Twitter. No, her photo is, is I'm from, go back. from Instagram, dude. Uh, oh, canned the Instagram, tuna, uh, yeah, that's another, photos. yeah. I think she wasn't talking about... Well, that's what she made the she made the uh, hummus is the photo you're talking about. This I think that's what she's tuna. talking about. What did she never mentioned hummus one time? It was I know. All we'll go, about what photo is she saying sucks? Her photo. Oh, her, her photo. Oh, her photo. Yo, photo sucks. Well, now oh, you're all defensive when you hear photo I know. sucks. Look, Look at, at you. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get it. I am defensive. All right, we gotta hop in the kitchen. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I just got a couple other uh, email things. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, comments. Do you remember this guy? Did I talk about this? Ben, who writes, the word love in all caps, and then he says, love, Sam the pre-boned in the ass by advertisements cooking guy. Do you ever feel like a cocksucker living in a bed, bath, and beyond? What? (laughs) Shall I read that again? Yes. Love, Sam the pre-boned in the ass by advertisements cooking guy. Do you ever feel like a cocksucker living in a bed, bath, and beyond? Oh my God, there it is. And I wrote, hmm, let me think about that. No, I don't. I don't actually. actually. And look at the night. Look what he wrote. Sorry, Sam. I got too drunk and then angry at the website. <laughs> oh, my God. See, this is what people do. They, they just troll around on the Internet trying to get rises out of people. How about this? <laughs> hey, I will. Uh, hey, my YouTube name is Anarchy Online 211. I made some stupid comments on your YouTube live cast channel oh. because I was bored and wanted to hear you mention me on one of your shows. By the way, you spelled here wrong. <laughs> and you recently blocked me. No, I'm not that gummy bear guy, but after seeing him get mentioned on your show for a stupid comment so many times, I thought <laughs> I would try. If you could unblock me, please. If you could unblock me, that would be amazing. I won't type stupid shit. Thanks. Wait, wait, wait. Sam, Sam, you know what you're doing right now? Yeah. It's called feeding the trolls. Of course. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> that is great. But no, Lynn, I wouldn't read it. I wouldn't have read this if both of these two hadn't have apologized. Oh, I think that's the so funny, funny part. It's I don't true. know if I'm going to give him a second chance. He pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, and uh, Yun Fang made a comment on the cheater hummus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All it says is uh, 19 minutes, 12 seconds. What? Was it that short of a show? No, no, no. She was referring to the point in 19 minutes and 12 seconds. And that's when you're talking about um, the Jap oranges. Oh, oh, the Jap oranges. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I clicked on How'd you know that? I clicked on it. I wanted to make sure what she was talking It's a link. You can click on it. It says ni- at 19 minutes and Oh, I seconds. got it. I got it. That's I got like it. what they're it. referring to. 
I got oh, it. Oh, man. All right. All right. That's it. I'm ready to cook something. Wait, one more thing. Yeah. I just want to remind everybody that they can go to the awesome, super, super awesome Bed Bath & Beyond blog at yeah, blog.bedbathandbeyond.com. You. you can see some... Oops, sorry. Oops. There's some great recipes right there for that chicken sandwich, chicken, some chicken sandwich, pasta, all this great pasta, stuff. Pasta, and there will chicken, be a video to and follow. A, and a cat. What's the cat one? The cat is just the next one. So okay, good. Go to that blog about bedbathandbeyond.com. Leave some great comments. Tell them that you love Sam the Cooking Guy. Got it. Mm -hmm. All right. Kitchen time. Let's I'm do hungry. it. Let's all do right, this. guys. Ready? Yep. Yeah, let's go. All right. So here's what we're making. Have, have I said? No. I haven't said? No. Okay. Do you know what this is? What? Uh, I don't say it like Linda's. Uh, endive. What do you say, Lynn? I do say endive. Endive? Yeah. Some people say endive. Endive. I think maybe Martha Stewart would say on Dave. Mm. Uh, so it's a little leaf, right? They're like little individual heads that have these, these pretty little perfect shaped for stuffing things in here uh, leaves. Mm. So we're going to make a little, uh, little shrimp appetizer that has um, these little baby shrimps in them and some dill and some avocado and it's going to be great. We'll put them on these leaves. And then you would just pick up a leaf and you would eat that. Once again, healthy, right? So here's what we need. I need a little avocado. It's a little soft. I hope this is not too soft. I had a hard time yesterday finding avocados. I don't like it when I have trouble finding avocados, but they always seem to be too soft or too hard. And ready for this? See, the inside is going to be... Moment of truth. Ooh, Ooh perfect. perfect. It's really perfect. Uh, we've done this before. Here's my way for getting it out. Just a big scoop on the inside. Flip it over. Nice. And that's nice. And then I'll cut in half because I want these fairly small. I've seen people doing all types of crazy things trying to get avocados out. Yeah, they make a special uh, scoop for it that I believe you can use a spoon for. You don't so need to though. That's the thing. It's, it's just... It's ridiculous. It's an avocado. It's an avocado. Okay, so we've got avocado. That can go in here. I'll break it up a little bit more when we get into it with the spoon when we start to mix it. I might as well put this in. We want this to be good. So, um, some celery. I was going to ask, can you get that baby shrimp pretty much anywhere? Yeah. Just a supermarket. You know, when I went looking for it, um, I went looking for uh, raw ones. I wanted to do my own. A couple weeks ago, I did something here and I poached my own shrimp. You know when you go and you buy those uh, shrimp that are already cooked with the tartar sauce, so like the cocktail sauce? Yes. Those shrimp suck. The cocktail sauce sucks. Yes. I like awful. to make my own. So I did something the other day and I wanted to make my own and, uh, and uh, I went looking. Oh, sorry. I made my own little, little baby. I made my own sh poached shrimp and they were super delicious. Mm -hmm. Um, but they were bigger than I wanted for these guys, and I couldn't find small ones, so I had to buy these guys already done. And I know there's some people that wouldn't like them, but whatever, who cares? So these, this is all pretty delicate. You wouldn't want to put a huge chunk of something crunchy in this, because it just wouldn't work. Try and think about the size of the scale of what it is that you're making. With little baby shrimp like this, a big piece of big honking piece of celery would be not the way to go. So I've cut this pretty tiny, right? Yes. And I could use a little bit more. So let me just do these guys. And it's kind of the same concept when you're making tuna salad or something. Yeah. You want everything to be similar sizes. Well, I want things to be right for what I'm making. I mean, if these were bigger shrimp, then I would make these guys bigger, but they're little babies. So this is bringing me back to the infamous Brussels sprouts incident. Oh, <laughs> that was a long time ago. On this I got cast. all different size Brussels sprouts and I got reamed out for it. I don't think reamed is the exact word. Oh yeah. I, okay. You got reamed out for it. Oh yeah. I was reamed. <laughs> oh, I tried to just, did that not work? No. <laughs> okay. So a little crunch from the celery, right? A little uh, butteriness from the avocado. This is 
good. A little bit more. Let's look at you talking food. We'll throw these like in. Yes, I know, I know. Why you want to have different flavors and textures and stuff in here too? I'd like a little cucumber, just a little bit. And you know, I'm starting to notice all these different vegetables in the farmer's market that are just starting to come around. Yeah, oh, by the way, I got a little uh, test for us on Friday show. Test? A little bit fun. Well, not so much for you, Master Chef, <laughs> uh, but for people that are watching. I, 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 you know me, I'm always up for a good exam. Exactly. It'll be good. So I'm sort of just skirting my way around the inside, and even though this is an English cucumber, in the inside, it is not nearly as mushy as uh, and watery as a as a regular cucumber. Yeah. I don't want too much of that. So. So here's I'm just going to do this. We'll throw a little cucumber in this. The coolness of it, the flavor, will be really delicious in here. And then we're we're almost there. We need a little something to hold this together. And you could absolutely use mayonnaise, unless you were trying to make this healthy, in which case you would use what? Greek yogurt. Yep. Thank you. There we go. There we go. There's that Greek yogurt tie-in again. It's a whole bowl of greeny goodness. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get these things out of the way. Avo, guys, come. Mm. Spoon, stay. I need a little lemon juice. It's gonna go into this thing. Here's what I bought. I bought a big boy of uh, Chobani. Nice. Because I like I like the Chobani Good stuff. I think it's uh, delicious. So I guess I can put this back up here. Oh, please. I'll start with that and see if I need uh, any bit more lemon juice. Oh yeah, sorry, uh, dill. And I have a confession to make. Let me let me look straight at the camera. I have a confession to make. I forgot to buy fresh dill. <sighs> I'm so mad. But real life scenario, what do you do? Do you run to the store? You adapt, or you do you pull out the dry dill? I'll tell you. Yeah, I really wish it was fresh dill, but I'm going <laughs> to use it because this is what happens. It happens to all of us. All this the time. is the kind of thing that happens to all yeah. of us, right? Dill, lemon juice. Little squeeze of the lemon juice in here. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. That was a small half of a lemon. Uh, a little bit of salt, always a little bit of salt. We've had this conversation, right? Mm -hmm. Everything benefits from salt. Brings out the flavors. Yep. And when you use dried ingredients, you use about half as much as you would of the fresh ingredient. Mm -hmm. So I can't go too crazy with this, even though I want to. And is that because the flavor is a little more concentrated? That's exactly right. That? Okay. That's what happens when stuff gets dried. So nice. look it. Looking good. Looks good, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever picture you take, Lynn, we're putting it up. I'm not going to have people <laughs> criticizing my shitty camera work. <laughs> Don't it worry. actually is a good picture. I'll take a great picture. It's not a bad picture. It's just of a gross. Well, that's that was my point. That sometimes it's tough to take thing, pictures of things like that. Right. It is. Hummus was really hard, man. Fresh ground pepper because I love it. So uh, you mean remember last week we made the uh, the white bean tuna salad? Yeah. Yeah. I did something similar because we got escarole from the farmers market, so I did. Oh. A, made a little escarole wrap. Nice. So it's like endive, but. It's like endive. Yeah. Okay, let's have a little taste. Try and get a little bit of everything on here. Mm. Actually, a little more dill. Really light, really fresh. There's really no bad in this, you know? Really no bad. God, I love this. Okay, so now, here's the, here's the drill. Okay, this is done. Let's do this. Let me get a little plate. There's nobody that's watching that can't make this. The only people that can't make this aren't watching. That's that didn't even make sense. Did it? <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this guy to separate them, cut the end off, it should help me a little bit. So look how these little leaves all happen cool. here, right? We can go one one way, one the other way. Ooh, look how fancy this is. Yeah, well. I dig it, man. Thanks, brother. 
So for those that haven't had endive before, what does it taste like to you? Uh, endive tastes like, well, this is technically, I think this is technically Belgium endive. Uh -huh. The red, I think, red Belgium. Which is different I'm not now. really sure. It's sweeter. Uh, no, it's, I mean, my bite was kind of sweet. Um, what's it taste like? still kind of bitter, right? A little bit? Like arugula kind of? No. Not at all? I'm getting no bitter off this. Oh, nice. Yeah. I don't know if I... I'm not really good at describing like how things sort of taste and stuff, but I'm loving this. These guys... Okay, what the hell? Screw it. <laughs> and dive everywhere, sir. Let's just... Thank you. Right. <laughs> Sorry, clean spoon. All right, and here's how we do this. Just a little bit in the end of each one. Because you can't, I mean, you don't want to fill it up too much. Can you start on that far end? Down here? Yeah. Of course. You mean continue on the far end? Yeah. So you're just trying to put a little bit at the end. You're not trying to fill this whole little endive boat up. Oh, so it's just like a little one biter. It's like a little bite, and then you follow it up with a little. Uh, it's an endive spoon right there. It's an endive spoon right there, right? You know, I w really wish I could do is figure out how to get these flat. <laughs> and the only way to do that <laughs> would be to do this. Look at Max getting all intimate. This is really dangerous here. <laughs> And it didn't work. <laughs> you piece of crap, you. That's not working at all. I that think it made it worse almost. It made it terribly worse, Lance. Now it's flopping. <laughs> I got an idea. Watch how we can fix this. All right, let me just finish these guys off. Oh, God. And I'm making a mess. Let me just get a bigger one here. This is delicate work, folks. Well, you know, you want them to look nice. You always want your work to look nice. And if it doesn't, I don't know how to do this. I don't know. There's no way. Oh, watch. Here's what you do. Stack like tacos, man. Stack them next to each other. There you go. Here's the answer. Right, like this. Okay, I'll we'll throw a couple more down on here. And then we'll be good to go. Look at that. Look at, now we're getting there, right? Look at that. That was, this was the answer. The answer was fill them up. Yeah, you need a little more filling to weigh them down. Well, and then lean them against one another. Okay, I'm gonna call this a day. I think you're good, yes. Because I want to now like eat one. <laughs> oh, they look really good. You sure good. you don't want to make like 25 more? <laughs> no, I'm gonna make one right here and make this one that, the one that I get to get and and this nonsense. Okay, healthy, yes. Delicious, hang on, I'll tell you. Look how beautiful that is. Oh, dig yeah. it, dig it a lot. That's good, right? That looks great. There's our picture right there, we could do that. Or we could have it draping over the top like a... Tongue? Like a tongue. <laughs> like an uni tongue. Mmm. <laughs> Lemon, a little bit of dill. Creamy avocado. Oh my God, so good. It's so good. If I walked into a party and these guys were sitting there, I'd be so happy because here's what happens. You go to a party and there's fried things and there's breaded things and there's a lot of... Unhealthy seems to be the buzzword when it comes to appetizers. I don't know why. And I don't like it. It's a little romaine like this right at the end. Super good. All right. Um... Endive with little dilled shrimp salad inside it, I guess, is, the, is what we can call it. We'll come up with something else maybe for the website. Okay, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, healthy Appetizer Week continues with a little, a little baby soup thing that's simple, super delicious on Friday. Thanks for being here. Uh, thanks for telling your friends about us. And 
Fixtures Living, you saw the little spot. They're coming along with their new store here in San Diego. It's going to be amazing. I mean, it's really dirt now, but every time I talk to them, they start telling me what's going on. It's fantastic. Nice. Really fantastic. All right, thanks for hanging out with us. Eat something delicious. Remember, don't eat shitty food.